All right, guys, uh, this is Hustle and Fun, and we're coming to you from Europe this time. So I'm here on vacation, but hey, I've um, got to have fun and got to work on a couple of cars here. So this is a 2008 Honda Jazz. Um, in the States, it's called a little bit different. Um, it's, see, it's a Jazz. And uh, I was trying to find out what year it was. And what was kind of funny to me is that it's not really listed on the insurance papers. It's not even listed on the book. As you can see, there's no data on it. But I did find out it's a 2008, so that's what we'll be working on it on. And uh, we'll be replacing the front brakes at first. It's making a squeaking noise. I brought some brake pads uh, from the States, so I don't know if it's going to fit or not. It's uh, in the States, it's called a Honda Fit, but we shall see if uh, it fits or not. So let's go ahead and um, get started on it. We're going to be using just uh, the minimal amount of tools. Um, we have the jack that we're going to be using uh, that's with the car. And then we'll, we have some other um, tools that I borrowed and we're going to see if that's going to work. If not, we're going to go out and purchase some tools. But for right now, let's get started and see what we can get done. So we're going to start with the um, left front tire. We're going to loosen all the lug nuts. And uh, once we do that, we're going to jack up the car. Make sure that it's supported um, once you have it lifted up so it doesn't fall on you. So let's loosen all the lug bolts and then lift up the car and see where we're at as far as the brakes are concerned. I have taken off the tire and uh, the lug nuts and uh, I was actually able to use uh, what was provided with the car. So I didn't need any extra tools for that. I used a 12 millimeter wrench to take off the two bolts that are holding uh, the calipers in place. So they're pretty short, uh, low bolts. Um, they were, um, I didn't need to use any force on them. I was able to use my hands and get them off. No extension bars or anything like that, or ratchets. So at this point I have taken out the um, uh, brake uh, um, pads. They're, as you can see, pretty thin. And that's the thicker of the two. So here's the other one that was making the noise because of this part right here. Um, what that is, it's an indicator. It indicates that your brakes are wearing thin, which uh, this was definitely the case. So we got it just in time. Um, the rotors seem to be in pretty nice shape, pretty even. And inside, and let me see the back side of it. The back side seems to be fine as well, so we should be good to go here. Um, I'm going to see if I can get this uh, um, wheel cylinder back. Uh, I usually use a C-clamp, which is a lot easier to do, but uh, I found one of these tools that they happen to have laying around. <clears throat> so I'm going to see if I can get this uh, back in place with this. Push the wheel cylinder back and uh, um, see if the brakes that I brought actually fit on here. So let's see where we go with that. So here's Frugina, the family dog. He's uh, apparently going to be helping us today. Um, he's, well, maybe he's walking away, but he was around here just a minute ago trying to help. So we have this uh, taken off. Um, I brought the new pads from the States and they were $52.00. They had a sale going on of 20% off. This was the last day for the sale. So I got uh, the front ones, which are the gold, and the back ones, which uh, I asked for gold. So I think they are also an auto zone, which means they have the semi-metallic and they have a lifetime warranty on them. So look at the difference between the two. That's the old one, and this is the new one. It seems like it's a good match. Even though it's a European model, um, but uh, it's a huge difference. I mean, this is uh, all the way worn down. I mean, we got it, we caught it just in time before it started eating into the metal. So it was a wonderful thing, um, just in time. 
we can put these on and we should be good to go. So I'm about to um, install these on here and then see how it works. By the way, that wrench uh, worked wonderful. Um, it worked even better than a C-clamp. So hopefully um, we can uh, put everything back together and it should be working well. So before we put the new pads in, we have these clips um, that uh, we can change also. Might as well change them for the new ones. Here's uh, two sets of the new ones. Um, one of them have a little tab on it and one does not. So um, we're going to see which one it is and we're going to replace those. Um, for so it looks like it's uh, we need to use the ones without the tabs. These uh, don't have those tabs on it, so we're going to be matching these with it. So I have taken the old ones off. I could use just a little screwdriver um, to pry underneath and they came out. The new ones uh, fit back in place, um, so it should be pretty easy to put back. So that's what we're going to do and then we're going to um, uh, put the pads in. So Houston, we may have a little bit of a problem here. Um, apparently it looks like that the new brake uh, pads, um, this little tongue is a little bit uh, longer than the original one. So it is not going to fit perfectly in place where I try to put them in. So I may have to grind a little bit off of this end here and a little bit off of this end here to make them fit. So we'll have to find a place where we can do that to make these fit in place. So unfortunately, um, this was not the same size, the two brake uh, pads. If you take a look at it uh, closer, you can see that if I line these up, um, these don't exactly match. So if I put this on this side, you see apparently how much uh, bigger the other one is. Also, if I match it up on the this bottom part right here, um, this part sticks out a little bit. So what I ended up is taking off the backing plate, this, uh, and I end up grinding down here, ended up grinding a little bit here on both sides, and also a little bit in here. So once I've done that, um, we made it fit. It's, it might be a little bit snug. I may have to take off a little bit more. I got the other side fit as well. And then uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, we'll test it and see if it works on one side. And if uh, that's the case, then we'll do the other side as well. So apparently the fit is a little bit snug. I had to kind of almost force it on here. Um, we'll see if everything sits well. It is possible that the American ones uh, are made a little bit more heavy duty. The brake pads might be a little bit uh, thicker but we'll see as we drive it if that's the case or it was just not seating properly. But in either case, I'll put it back together, take it for a test drive and see how it feels. And if it seems to be good, we're good to go on this side and we'll go to the other side. So I don't uh, necessarily recommend you do this. Uh, it takes a little bit of uh, practice to be able to use the grinder, what I used to, to cut this back or a grinding wheel. Um, manufacturers probably will not uh, recommend this and also you may avoid your warranty on the pads but uh, you know if you're willing to take that risk and you're in a bind this is something you can do as I said on this channel I'm trying to help you guys out do something that may not be in everyday practice and with the minimal amount of tools if, if at all possible the minimal cost but still achieve a pretty good uh, product at the end so that's what we're striving for. Let's see what we can do and see if this works. We just need to put the bolts back in. Um, one here and one back there. If you have the grease now, it would be a good time to use it like an anti-seize grease to put on the um, uh, bolts. So um, next time you take it apart, especially if you drive through salt in winter conditions that it doesn't rust on you. And it also, um, slides uh, easily. Okay, let's see um, how it turns out. So just one quick tip, um, there's also an 18 millimeter bolt on here, or I should say nut, that you may have to hold in place if it's turning. Um, on top, I needed to hold it in place, on the bottom I did not. So you 
turn the 12 millimeter um, as usual clockwise to uh, tighten it and then the 18 millimeter the opposite way um, to hold it in place while you're tightening the bolt. So I tightened it, I'm ready to put the um, wheel back on and take it for a test drive. So I took the jack out and we are good to go. And our inspector's back here. He's going to apparently take another round to make sure everything is good around the car. We're going to give this a try, see how it works, if it works and how it works, and then uh, we'll get to the other side. So I have taken it for a test drive and it seems to be driving fine. So I will be doing the other side also. Um, right now we're heading out uh, and uh, having some fun. We gotta have that also. I'm on a vacation, so I might as well. But uh, I'm going to take care of the other side and clean the car up a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. But in the meantime, um, you guys are welcome to try this. But as I said, it may not be recommended that much since you have to alter the pads and have to do some things that the manufacturers may not recommend. And uh, do everything at your own caution. And be careful lifting up the uh, car, supporting it. And uh, as I said, this is uh, just uh, kind of a trick that you can do just to make things fit. That may not be what's the best uh, idea. You can always get the right pads, but the other side is done the same way. So um, we're done with the front brakes. As I said, I'll do the other side a little bit later. Probably won't have a video on that, but uh, it goes together the same way as this one. And since we didn't open up any of the brake lines, um, we shouldn't have to bleed the brakes. We should be good to go. And I may have a video coming up on the back of the, the car also, how to do those shoes. So take care. Um, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.